Welcome to another video tutorial from 2dgameartguru.com. Today I'll be working in Inkscape to create something like this blob, a simple character to show the use of shading, blue gradient and clipping mask to contain the shapes inside the blob. The idea is to get all this done in 15 minutes without a time lapse showing you in real time how this character is created. So let's start with a simple circle. And yes, there will be stuff ups, there will be the wrong keys pressed and shortcuts working in the wrong program. But I still hope I get the idea across of creating something with simple shapes and a little bit of tweaking and yeah, as you can see, twisting to get to the final result. Once I created the circle, I converted it into curves and am now adjusting the shape to give me a bit more of a blob shape that has a movement towards the right. It will have a slightly darker outline. So I set the stroke paint to a shade that is a little bit darker than the main body color and adjust the stroke thickness to make it a little bit thinner than the four millimeters that were in the initial setting. So I'm going to go down to half that size and then start with more detail for the shading by duplicating the base shape and scaling it down a little bit. The highlights won't need an outline, so I take the outline off and give it a wide fill and adjusting the opacity, seeing it's a highlight, it will shine through, so we need something in the range of 40 to 50% opacity. I duplicate the shape and scale it down a little more, reducing the widths to create a shape that I will cut out of the initial shine, selecting both of them using the pass difference to cut those two apart and then breaking them apart into two different objects. With the gradient tool, I can now shape them down by selecting the start and the end point. The end point will turn into a zero alpha, so it shades down from the top to the bottom. With the circle tool, I create a shadow shape at the bottom of the blob. This is the part where the blob hits the ground. It should be slightly darker, so I give it a color that's a tad darker than the base color. I duplicate it for another shape to give the shading a little bit more depth once I blur and adjust the opacity. I do the same thing with the highlights. Using the circle tool, I create shapes at the top. This time, I think they're going to be lighter. Choose a white with a 50% opacity and add a, another highlight on the left side to enhance the rim light on that side. Next up are the eyes. I give them a darker background, a simple circle with a shade slightly darker than the base color and a gradient seeing the light comes from the top. We're going to shade this one top to bottom as well. Still set to a circular gradient, so changing it to a linear gradient for this one. And a duplicate of that one inside to darken it even further before adding the main eye, which will be just a black ellipse with added highlights to give it a little bit of shine. This is the most simple approach for an eye. There are many options. You can try something a lot fancier. I did an earlier video on creating a Pixar style eye. Maybe look at that and give it more shading a proper iris and more expression. But for now, I'm gonna keep it simple. The three circles clearly identified as an eye. Next up is the mouse. I use the pen tool and create a zigzag line that gets a stroke. Well, now it gets a stroke. And I'm gonna color it black and add a slightly thicker line to that. That's a little bit too much. so going to reduce it down to a thickness close to the outline of the base shape. I select the nodes and turn them into symmetric 
and then manually adjust the mouse to be a nice smooth wavy shape. Once the position is right, I duplicate it and create a darker shadow shape. The stroke color will be set to a term that is a little darker than the base shape. To give the mouse the idea of an indent, we have a shadow above and a highlight below the mouse line. The shadow shape sits above once I turn off the snapping and the highlight shape sits below using a white for that and blurring both those shapes to soften them. I adjust the opacity to blend them in. I usually change the blend mode as well. I like to use a multiply for the shadows and the screen for the highlights. I do the same with the eye. I blur the two shading shapes, soften those and make it look like a proper indent. I select everything, scale it a little bit down and move it into position and then duplicate the whole eye, mirror it and move it onto the right side, scale it down a little bit to match up and then mirror the inner part to adjust the highlights to match because that's one of my pet peeves, mirroring the eyes and not adjusting the highlights is just lazy. I set the shading shapes to multiply, that way they get mixed with the colors underneath, which makes the shadows just stand tad nicer, usually warmer than just a plain normal. I do the same thing with the shadows at the bottom, set them to multiply and adjust the blur for those. Adjust the blur for the highlights as well give them a little smoother outline with the blur and do the same thing with my two rim lights. I duplicate the highlight on the left side to add a little bit more shine to that side. Well, now I'm duplicating it and I adjust the nodes for that one to be wider and sit properly at the top and the bottom. After adjusting the blur to match the slightly bigger shape, I return to the base shape and give it a gradient just to make it look more interesting. Choosing a blue tone rather than the aqua I started out with and make the highlight more interesting as well, giving it a proper light color so we have a translucent blob that clearly has light coming from the top and that means I have to adjust the colors for the shading elements around the eyes and at the base. They need a bit more of a blue turn. Well, that's a little bit too much blue. To make the blob look a little bit more interesting, I'm adding some circles in a semi-transparent blue on either side of the eyes. I adjust the opacity of the circles to be less uniform.
I adjust the color of the shadow at the bottom and the tone for the upper lip. Blur that a little bit more and then go in and add some highlight to the lower lip so that the gap stands out a bit more. Maybe the wrong spot there, that looks better. Get some highlight there and another highlight further to the right. To create the clipping mask, I select all the shapes on top of the base circle, cut them out and then create a clip mask from the base shape. Select it in the layer and paste everything on top of the clip. That way now all the elements are inside and trimmed by the initial circle. The outline has been adjusted so I reset that to the size we had prior to make it thick enough a little bit more blur and fine tuning for those shapes. I copy those shadow shapes and paste them in as the shadow that the blob casts on top of the background, not inside the clip, but they just need to go on top or below in the layer stack, so let's move them below. Not that color either, so let's adjust the color first. It needs to be a bluish tone, and then they need to go below the blob and in front of my gray background. There we go. With all the basic elements in place, it's time to fine tune, adjust the opacity and the blur of some elements. Maybe a highlight underneath the eyes. If there is an indent, there should be a highlight at the bottom of it where the indent comes back out. So let's add a highlight underneath the eyes. Give it a gradient after transforming the shape a little bit from the initial circle to curve and mirror it to the other side and adjust the widths there. And we have our blob more or less and a little bit more fine tuning. The blurring helps to just soften the shapes and not have the very sharp outlines that normally characterize the vector designs. I'm adding yet another highlight shape, this one sitting more to the center. Again I adjust the nodes to match and fit in with the blob shape. It needs to be wider and the blur needs to be adjusted as well as the opacity. I want this to be a little stronger than the others. One of the nice things about the clipping group is that seeing this element was inside the clipping group. Duplicating it means it gets put on top of the stack but inside the clipping group so it is trimmed by the outer shape of the blob which is really important when you work with blurs because the initial shape is inside the blob but the blur might be overlapping the edge so you want to trim it to make sure there is no semi-transparent pixels outside of your base shape. As I'm getting close to the 15 minute mark, I will finish here. I think it turned out to be a pretty decent blob. It was rather simple to create. All it took were a lot of circles, deformed, blurred, adjusted in their opacity with some transparent gradients thrown into the mix. I hope you enjoyed this video. 
If you learned something new today, hit the like button to celebrate your new bit of knowledge. To help you remember everything you've learned even better, subscribe to the channel. Let me know what you'd like to see on this channel or on my website in the comments below. And I hope to see you again soon.